My dearly beloved, in Christ today, on the second Sunday of Advent, we have presented to us by Holy Mother Church the figure of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist was a very ascetic person, penitential, and that was very obvious to the people, and they were very drawn to him. And he prepared them for our Lord's manifestation for his public life. And for that reason, during Advent, when we are preparing to celebrate the birth of our Lord, we have uh, St. John the Baptist mentioned in three of the four Sundays, beginning today and for the next two Sundays as well. And in today's Gospel, St. John the Baptist sends several of his disciples to our Lord to ask him, Art thou he who is to come, or shall we look for another? Now, we know that St. John the Baptist knew our Lord was the Messiah. There was no doubt in his mind. In fact, he had said, when our Lord came to him to be baptized, he said the words, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. And we use those words every time we have Mass when the priest holds up the host before the distribution of Communion. So it's very clear that St. John the Baptist knew our Lord was the Messiah, but his disciples did not. And they were very attached to him. So wanting to turn them away from himself, turn them to our Lord, like he said, he must increase and I must decrease, but wanting them to become attached to our Lord, he sent them to our Lord with the question, art thou he who is to come, he whom we have been awaiting? Or shall we look for another? And our Lord said, go back and report to John the things you have heard. The deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk, the poor have the gospel preached to them, the dead rise. And it's interesting that our Lord had been performing miracles when they came, and so they witnessed them. And it was another way of saying, look, I am fulfilling everything that the prophets said about the Messiah. But after they had left... Our Lord said to the people, What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Those who wear soft garments live in the houses of kings. St. John the Baptist indeed was a very striking figure, very, again, ascetic, penitential. He lived in the desert for years before the Holy Ghost prompted him to come out and begin preaching. He lived on whatever food he could scrounge in the desert. As it says in the, in the gospel, locusts and wild honey was his food. He had a garment made of camel's skin and again lived a very penitential life. This reminds us that we as Catholics, as faithful Christians, must also practice penance. It's indispensable. And in fact, it's hard to understand why Protestants do not see the necessity of penance. You can look back into the Old Testament and find many examples of the prophets and holy people fasting, doing penance for their sins. And then look in the New Testament, since the time of Christ, look at the lives of the saints. And even though they were so holy, They did great penance. Why? To atone for sin, but also to safeguard against falling into sin. And in fact, our Lord himself said, unless you do penance, you shall perish. Many years ago, I met a group of Bible Protestants, Bible Christians, as they called themselves, non-denominational, and they just read the Bible, etc. And we were having a conversation, and I mentioned to them, those words of our Lord, unless you do penance, you shall perish. And they said, where's that? Show us, where's that in the Bible? And it's interesting, they don't have a sense of that element of Christianity because they believe that our Lord died on the cross and if we have faith in him, everything is wiped away and there's no purgatory, so everybody who dies, who accepts our Lord, goes straight to heaven, so then there's no need for penance. So they're missing such a monumental part of Christianity, that necessity of doing penance. 
In fact, Catholics have, always, have often been looked down upon and derided with the term fish eaters, the fish eaters, because Catholics abstain from meat on Friday. Doesn't mean you have to have fish on Friday. Some people don't like fish. You just can't have meat. And why? Because Holy Mother Church knows that we are weak and we often won't do penance on our own. So she makes us, she requires us to do penance by fasting and abstaining, fasting during Lent and on Ember Days, abstaining from meat on Fridays, because we must do penance. And I'd like to read to you a little bit from the writings of St. Alphonsus Liguori in this regard. And he talks about what is our first penance. Our first penance is the penance of daily duty and accepting the trials that God sends our way. By the penance of daily duty, I mean fulfill your duties according to your state in life as well as you can and bear with patience the contradictions, the sufferings, the inconveniences the little annoyances, and sometimes big annoyances that come your way every day. Accept them and bear them in a spirit of penance and reparation. So let's listen to the words of St. Alphonsus. We can enjoy true peace of heart only when we carry our cross with patience and resignation. The Holy Ghost warns us not to act as irrational animals which become enraged when they cannot gratify their desires. Quote, do not become like the horse and the mule who have no understanding, taken from Psalm 31. Of what use is it to be impatient in trouble and contradictions? We only increase our burden thereby. The two thieves who were crucified with our blessed Redeemer were suffering similar torments. But the good thief was saved because he bore them with patience, while the bad thief was eternally lost because he suffered impatiently and rebelled. The same trial, says St. Augustine, leads the good to glory because they suffer with patience and resignation, but the wicked to eternal damnation from a want of patience and conformity with God's will. He goes on, when God gives you something to suffer, says St. Augustine, he acts as a physician and the suffering he sends is not a punishment, but a remedy. Whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and he, he, and he scourgeth, scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If everything goes well, says St. Augustine, acknowledge the Father who caresses you. If you have something to suffer, Acknowledge the Father who chastises you. Hasten, O Lord, cries St. Bonaventure. Hasten and wound thy servants with the wounds of love and salvation, that we may not succumb to the wounds of anger and eternal death. And one last quote is from St. Bernard. God is never more angry than when he is not angry with you, with the sinner, and fails to punish him. That's the greatest punishment of all. God abandons the sinner. And instead of sending him the cross to bring him to his senses, just abandons him, allows him to enjoy the things of this world because he will not be happy in the next. So when God sends us a trial, let us remember that he does it for our good, for our sanctification. And let us bear our daily crosses with patience, looking upon the example of our blessed Redeemer himself, of the saints, of Our Lady standing there at the foot of the cross without complaint, bearing her heavy cross with such patience. And let us look to the example during Advent of St. John the Baptist, who himself had no sins to atone for. If we are to believe what the saints and the theologians tell us about him, he was cleansed from original sin in the womb of his mother. He lived a completely innocent and holy life, and yet he did great penance by performing some sacrifices during Advent and especially by carrying our crosses. We will prepare well for Christmas and we will especially prepare well for eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.